Are you you're good yeah thank you good i'm happy to see you daniela hey daniela excuse me hello um so we're going to do our quiz today we're talking about the american road trip taking a long drive to see america etc okay so we learn with a quiz okay so it's normal not to know the answers Okay, so we learn as we go. I am going to, in one moment, I'm going to share my screen. But first, I'm going to start our little game. One second. And you are going to prepare your cell phone. Okay, I'm just going to turn on the phone. Yes, in one moment, one moment, I'm, I'm preparing for you now. Okay, now I am going to share my screen with you. Okay, do you see this? Now you can use the QR code with your phone or you can go to this website, www.kahoot.it, not com, but dot it. Okay. And then your game pin is this. Okay. Yes, just a moment because we had uh, shut, uh, shut down uh, our phone. No problem. Mm -hmm. Take your time. I wait for you. I'll wait for you. Thank you. Okay. So you want to go to the website or use the QR code with the scanner on your phone. Mm. And then when it asks you for a pin, you put this number and then you give your name, your nickname. You could just put your first name. Like I put Caroline, you could put Daniela, you can put. Daniela, can you speak? Daniela, do you, can you hear me okay? Can you let me send team? Se puoi aprire il microfono. Ok. Se vuoi puoi tenere chiuso la camera, se vuoi però eh, voglio sentire la voce per essere sicuro che mi senti. Tutto ok? Ok. Ok, I hear you now. Ok, perfect. So you can keep your camera on or off, no problem. Ok, Laura Gizia is here. Daniela, tutto ok? Sai entrare? Bruna, ok, benissimo, good. Quindi aspettiamo solo Daniela. Daniela, is everything ok? Just the moment, I need the glasses. Oh, okay. No, no problem. <laughs> I have my glasses too. I have my glasses. What, uh, excuse me, what I have to do? Oh, turn on your phone. And you can go to www.kahoot.it with your cell phone. Oh, say, lo scan per fare così. I have to use. It's better than the screen. Okay. With your smartphone. Daniela, chiudi la la telecamera perché si vede che c'è non è stabile la tua connessione, non si sente bene. Quindi chiudo, chiudi la la camera e tieni aperto la l'audio. Ok, adesso provo di nuovo. Ok, quindi Daniela vai a questo sito qua, vedi sullo schermo con il tuo cellulare e poi metti questo pin. 
go to that site and put your pin. Are you there? Did you say? <clears throat> Daniela, come va? Sì, sto tentando di entrare. Ok, ok. Perché pensavo fosse una conferenza da ascoltare e sono sul cellulare. Oh, ok, <ride> allora prima. niente. Facciamo così, Daniela, voi... Puoi partecipare no. anche a voce se vuoi allora. No, no, ma apro sul... sul... È più cioè, è divertente se si fa, però se no non fa niente, facciamo così. È la prima volta che vieni per quello, no? Abbiamo questa usanza di giocare. Non si apre. Non si apre. Allora, tranquilla, facciamo così. Tu vai a voce, va bene? Ok. Ok? All right. Perché è solo per divertirci. Infatti non, uh, non sapremo tutte le risposte, più per imparare insieme. Ok? Bruna, Laura Gizze, are you ready? Yes. yes. Ok, we're going to begin. Ok, so this week <coughs> we're talking about the American road trip. Here we go. Ok. Three, two, one. Quiz. G give me a ticket for the mm -mm. Ain't got time for a fast mm. Lonely days are going. I'm a going home. My baby, she said, be later. So is it airplane and train? Red, tram and space needle, yellow, bus and camper, blue, or VW bus and motorcycle? Very good. It's give me a ticket for an airplane. Ain't got time for a fast train. Do you know that song? It's a song that I think of when I think about traveling in the, in the United States. Okay, next. Okay, let's go to the next one. True or false? The first cross country road trip was in 1903 and took 63 days. Is it true or false? Very good. You saw the photo, right? The photo is a real photo from 1903. And then it took 63 days to go from coast to coast. Now it takes much less time. Okay. Looks like you both got it. There you go. Good for you. Next question. True or false? The beat generation was a literary movement of the 1950s. True or false, the beat generation? False, it was true. The beat generation, if you know some, do you know any of the names of the beat generation? Have you heard of Jack Kerouac, William Burroughs, Allen Ginsberg? These were writers in the 1950s who were, this is after World War II, so they're kind of, disillusioned they're young they want to have an exciting life they don't want to do what their parents tell them to and it was in the 1950s okay so this is new information for you true or false the this anti-academic beat movement started on a university campus true or false it's true. So they were anti-academic, but they were students at Columbia University in New York. So especially William Burroughs. Now, William Burroughs was also a professor later in his life, but uh, they didn't like that conformity. They, they didn't like the idea of all the rules. They wanted to invent their own rules. You're going to say, why are we talking about literature right now? Hmm. Which author was not in the beat generation? Red, Allen Ginsberg. Yellow, William Burroughs. Blue, Lawrence Ferlinghetti. Or green, William Styron. Yeah, yeah, William Styron was not in the beat generation. Allen Ginsberg, famous, famous poet, lived until just a few years ago. William Burroughs, he wrote The Naked Lunch, if you ever heard that. 
Lawrence Ferlinghetti just died, I think, last year. Very important names to remember when we talk about this very American literary movement. Last time I saw you, we talked about the Harlem Renaissance. The Harlem Renaissance and the Beat Generation have many things in common. We'll see if you can decide what things in common they have. Okay, here we go. True or false? The Beat Generation only occurred in America. True or false? Or was it a European phenomenon? It's true. It's a very American uh, literary movement. As far as we know, it didn't go elsewhere. It's just in America. Bruna, you're on fire. <laughs> true or false? Jack Kerouac wrote the novel On the Road in 1951. It's true. So we said that the Beat Generation, uh, that literary movement was in the 1950s. Uh, On the Road is sort of the most, one of the most famous uh, books of the time. It was about a road trip that Jack Kerouac took that was in San Francisco. Oh, he finished in San Francisco, started in New York, and he did hitchhiking to get to uh, California. So it was about his adventures really on the road. And this became a symbol for freedom, for Americans wanting to go out and experience um, that, that um, well, like many people want to take that trip, right, to, to discover themselves and discover the country. So On the Road is sort of one of our most famous uh, books about taking a trip in your car. Bruna, you're on fire. Oh, Dejitza, you're, you're pretty good too. I like it. True or false? On the Road took us from New York to San Francisco and still inspires American road trips today. It's true. So On the Road is started in New York. In fact, uh, Jack Kerouac was from a town called Lowell, Massachusetts, but he uh, went to New York to go to a private school called Horace Mann, and then he went to um, Columbia University, he had a football scholarship that allowed him to go to Columbia. But in San Francisco, he met up with all the other writers that started together and they finished together in San Francisco. Jack Kerouac also is interesting because his first language was French. Mm -hmm. His family was French Canadian and many families in Lowell, Massachusetts. Okay, Massachusetts is this, the, the state where there's also Boston and some other cities um, had a large population of French speakers. So Jack Kerouac, his, uh, his first language was not English. He actually learned English just like you. Bruna, look at you. Aren't you on fire? Laura Jitsia, what are you going to do? You got to stop her. All right, quiz. Which term was used to refer to beat generation members? Were they hippies, red, yellow dropouts, or blue beatniks, or green extremists? They were not hippies. Oh, they, they were the, the parents of the hippies. In fact, they opened the door for the hippies because the hippies were from the 1960s and 70s. They were protesting the Vietnam War. The beatniks were just the generation before that, after uh, World War II, right? And um, so they have a lot in common, but they called them the beatniks. When you see images of a beatnik, they were wearing black. Um, if you think about the movie Grease, if you think about uh, Johnny Zuko and them, they all have these black, you know, these black jackets on. They look very much like the beat generation. There's a lot of snapping, a lot of... <laughs> But the hippies had long hair and they wore the, what we were familiar with in the 1970s. The, hip, the beatnik generation, they were very clean cut, short hair. Uh, men had short hair, they were black. Sort of the poetic period, they look kind of French. All right, how are we doing here? Oh, quiz. Who opposed the beat generation's ideals? Was it postmodernists, red, old people, yellow, their peers? Uh, which should be blue, or everyone, green, who opposed the Beat Generation's ideals? 
They were a youth movement, remember? Yes, old people, because the beat generation was really young people, young people who were not convinced that doing what their parents did was the best idea, right? Getting, getting married, having children, doing that whole thing. That wasn't necessarily, um, they had some questions about it. So old people thought that they were just, oh my goodness, what's happening with this young generation? Okay, quiz. Which genre of music was popular with the beat generation? Was it emo, red? Was it reggae, yellow? Was it blue, rock and roll, or green, jazz? It was jazz. If you think about the Harlem Renaissance, those were the, uh, those were the people they were listening to. So they were very interested in jazz. They were interested in what was happening in those clubs in New York, et cetera. So they're after, but they were very influenced by the jazz musicians. And later rock and roll, right? But this is a little bit sort of at the beginning of that. Okay, this has more than one answer. What ideas did the beat generation oppose? What did they not like? Was it red materialism? Was it yellow experimentation with drugs? Blue traditional ideas of masculinity? Green art and poetry? What did they oppose? What did they not agree with? There's more than one answer. Yes, they opposed materialism and they opposed traditional ideas, especially of masculinity. In fact, they called it, there were some women, but it was a man's movement, I would say. There were a few women who were who became famous writers in the beat generation, but it was largely a man's movement. Um, experimentation with drugs, they were not opposed to drugs. They actually liked the drugs <laughs> and used them for their sort of spiritual experiences. Art and poetry was what they did. So they were interested in art. They were interested in poetry, uh, discovering spiritual alternatives, um, just doing anything that was different than what their parents did. True or false? The Beat Generation supported the civil rights movement. True or false? Absolutely true. Okay. So actually, it was another counterculture. So it's funny how we think of we we have a tendency to think about things as being very black and white, but remember, there's always some overlap. So the Beat Generation was very interested in uh, civil rights, and in fact, there were some black writers who were contributing to the Beat generation movement, but uh, in giving a very unique voice to America at that time. But the main, the dominant voice was a white male voice, but there were also women, there were also um, African Americans also contributing. True or false? Drug use was a common theme for the beat generation. True or false? Yeah, drugs, and uh, mostly LSD and those kinds of, this is just before, uh, they weren't really regulated in the same way. So there was some experimentation with like Native American drugs like peyote, uh, LSD, acid, um, marijuana, these kinds of things that weren't, uh, didn't have the same stigma yet. They, later they would become very problematic. But at the time they were um, even professors at the university were using them and experimenting with them in an open way because it wasn't yet regulated. Multi-select, you can choose more than one answer. The beat generation had unconventional views on red religion, yellow sexuality, blue free love and green work. You can choose more than one or all of them, hint, hint. Very good, you know how I roll, yeah. They were interested in, um, you know, non-Western religions. They were very interested in Buddhism and that kind of thing. Sexuality, they were very interested in having as much as they could, free love, work. Um, they had a very different approach to work. Their approach to work was not necessarily having the secure job, but working, making some money, changing jobs. Um, and before that, that was not very, you know, people were very into the very getting, a, you know, getting your work that you're going to, have for the rest of your life, but the B generation did not, was not interested in that kind of security. 
you are good at this quiz. What form of travel did the beat generation popularize in the United States? Taking the bus, red. Driving an RV, yellow. Blue, hitchhiking or green, walking. Hitchhiking, it's when you put your thumb up and you go across the country. So if you had a car, great, but if not, you could catch a ride with someone else. Quiz. According to Jack Kerouac, his generation was beaten down by uh, red modernism, yellow traditionalism, blue idealism, or green bureaucracy. What was keeping them down? You felt beat down. Traditionalism. In fact, the word beat generation came originally from the Harlem Renaissance because in the Harlem Renaissance, they were talking about feeling beat down by also by uh, a racist culture. So the beat said, yeah, we also feel beaten down by, tr by tradition. So, but then uh, the beat generation took that word and made it positive saying, but there's also something about hope in there's a beat, music has a beat, right? So jazz has a beat people have a beat. So upbeat means to be positive. So the same word, beat generation, has a negative connotation, meaning it's a reaction to something negative, but also has hope in art and music and in other things. Quiz. Route 66 linked these two American cities. New York and Seattle is red. Chicago and Los Angeles is yellow. Boston and Las Vegas is blue. And St. Louis and Montreal, green. It's actually, ah, so you thought it was uh, coast to coast, right? But actually it started in the Midwest. So the, uh, route, the original Route 66 was important because it made the trip from Chicago in the Midwest a lot faster to get to Los Angeles. So it opened up um, possibilities for many people because you finally had a, a road that took you straight there. So now we're talking more about Route 66. Route 66 was active from 1926 to 1985, true or false? Very good. Yeah, it's true. Uh, in 1985, they they stopped. I think they had another modern uh, route that they used from then on. And but the problem was they had to change the name because people were stealing all of the signs. <laughs> you know, it was sort of becoming this place where people were trying to take take a piece of history there. So they actually just changed the name. Only recently did they put the historic Route 66 signs back up. But it was they stopped calling it Route 66 because it had some detours. It was no longer the same road it used to be. But now there are pieces of it that still exist. And they do have the signs that say um, historic. Now, this one is one of the originals, but the new ones say something like historic Route 66. Okay. Quiz. How long does it take to drive from New York to California now? Because it takes 63 days. Uh, 1,800 hours is red. 100 hours is yellow. 120 hours is blue. And 43 hours is green. Wow. Normally, we don't drive this many hours. But yeah, you would think 1,800 hours. But actually, it's only 43 hours. Um, but normally we don't, nobody drives 43 hours in a row. So normally each day would be maybe eight hours of driving, right? So in about five days, you could get there. Um, so we also, for every eight hours, you know, roughly for about eight hours of driving, you have one hour of air travel. So if you want to go to, or if you want to fly from New York to Los Angeles, it takes you five hours and 20 minutes, almost as long as it takes to go to London, which is about uh, an hour more <laughs> by plane, right? So it's interesting how far they really are. But we have a difficult time even imagining how far. We normally think of New York to 
uh, Los Angeles is a two week trip or longer because you know you want to enjoy the scenery. Just driving for 43 hours is not fun. All right, how many states do you cross from New York to California? Is it 50 states? Red, 20 states, yellow? Uh, blues, 10 states, or green, five states? How many states do you cross if you do that New York to California? The fastest route. It's, yeah. oh, is there a problem with somebody? I see there's one answer. One of you is slower. Who was it? Bruna, did you have a problem giving an answer? Uh, I, I checked. Uh, oh, you were Googling the answer. No, no, but no, no. I, I selected the, the correct, uh, but I don't know. And now, ah, no, I have, maybe, maybe I didn't. Uh, Push, um, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No problem. Okay. It happens. It's not a perfect system. Okay. How much does it cost now to drive coast to coast? Is it $639.38? Is it $1,200? Is it $500.98 or $2,000? How much does it cost to drive? Talking about gas for your car and tolls, et cetera. Mm -hmm. One way. It costs, as of today, because of the price of, of uh, fuel, it's $639.38. They calculate that one gallon of gas, which is about three liters, is uh, $5.90 or something like that. So... It's much cheaper to drive in America than it is to drive here. But right now it's very expensive for Americans because normally, um, normally gas, for example, when I arrived in Italy, that was 20 years ago, but I was paying 99 cents for a gallon, $1. And here the price for you know one liter was a dollar. So you can imagine it was just a very big difference. Now the price is very expensive in America, probably because of everything that's happening in the world. True or false? An important part of American road tripping is roadside attractions like this big duck here. True or false? It's true. If you've seen these crazy roadside attractions like oh it's the world's largest bottle of ketchup <laughs> you'll see these crazy things in fact let's show you a picture here so here you can see them i don't know how well you can see it but like you, you might see a giant dinosaur or a large tire or the world's largest teapot this is the world's largest ketchup bottle which is also a water tower um the world's largest or second largest. You just see all this crazy stuff. Um, just an excuse to get you to come and take a look and maybe go in their store or something. So that's a very tacky kits, right? Kits part of American culture are these roadside attractions. How long does it take to fly from New York to Los Angeles? Is it five hours and 20 minutes red, three hours and 15 minutes yellow? Is it two hours or is it one point? five hours, green. So now you're in an airplane. You, oh, you didn't listen. I told you before, you forgot. Five hours and 20 minutes. To, to drive, it takes a lot longer, but it's about uh, five hours. It's a long time. So often people will fly at night and that is called to take the red eye, they call it. If you take the red eye, oh, I flew the red eye from New York to California. It means that I, I flew during the night so that you wake up in, you wake up in California. Quiz. How long does it take to drive from New York in the north to Florida in the south? Is it 16 hours, which is two days? Is it eight hours, which is one day? Is it 24 hours, which is three days? Or is it 32 hours, which is four days? How long does it take to drive? 
It is, oh, you, you both said eight hours one day. It's actually 16 hours. It's two days. In fact, my family also, we used to go to Florida for vacation and in the winter you could drive there. And it took us from, from uh, Chicago around there. It took us about two days also. So two days of sitting in the car and sweating with your brother next to you, making noises and <laughs> sweating on us. Oh, horrible road trips. Quiz. You can select more than one answer. American road trip classic books. Which ones are American uh, classics? Uh, red is Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance by Robert uh, M. Piercing. Yellow is Travels with Charlie by John Steinbeck. Um, Black Like Me is J.H. Griffin and Roughing It and Life on the Mississippi by Mark Twain. Which books are classic American books about travel? Well, if you know me, I put everything. So the reason I always put these multi-select ones is so I can give you some more information. So Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance is one of the most beautiful books I've ever read in my life. I hope you get a chance to read it. Um, that was from 1974. And it's the story of a man who crosses the country on his motorcycle. Um, he's in a bad moment in his life. Uh, and in the end, he has some uh, mental problems. And he, at the end, it's very tragic. Um, but it's such a beautiful book. It's like a man and it's a man and his motorcycle in the road. It's gorgeous. Then travels with Charlie was a book by John Steinbeck, who, you know, wrote the book, the grapes of wrath. And this was a book about him traveling with his little dog. <laughs> so again, a man in his car. And in this case, a man and his dog. So we've got a man in a motorcycle and a man and his car. And so that's where I talk about the man's movement. It's more about not talking about the woman, but a man in his car, a man in his motorcycle, a man in his dog, right? Um, Black Like Me is an interesting story because this is the story of a white man in the 1960s, 1950s, who decides to do an experiment. He colors his skin dark. So he goes out in the sun, gets very tan, but he also wears makeup so that he looks like a black man. And, his ex and he decided not to talk very much, but he wanted to travel in the South of America, in, in the Southern states, in the, the pro you know, to see what, it, what the experience was for him as a black man. And so he learned a lot about, um, about racism because he himself went from being a white man to being a black man. In fact, it's a very important book um, that is like a social activism book because it's him talking about that experience. No one had done that before. So it was traveling, but also the experience of being an African-American. Then Roughing It and Life on the Mississippi. Mark Twain lived on the Mississippi. So if you know Mark Twain, um, he loved to write about travel. He also, did a lot of writing when he did a cruise, a crochetta around the world. And he even talks about Milan. He talks about his uh, impressions of going to Europe, but he writes also a lot about traveling in America. So it's fun to read uh, Mark Twain to get an idea of his point of view about America. Quiz, multi-select. Classic American songs about road tripping. Red is On the Road Again by Willie Nelson. Yellow, Born to be Wild by Steppenwolf. Little Red Corvette by Prince. And Graceland by Paul Simon. Which ones are American classics about road tripping? All of them. You, you figured out my method, right? So uh, On the Road Again by Willie Nelson. On the Road Again. I just can't wait to get back home again. Okay. Um, so that's a, when we talk about road tripping, you have to sing you know, on the road again, because a part about traveling in your car for many days is you have to have the right music and there's road tripping music and you can even go to Spotify and look for a playlist for your, <laughs> for your road trip. Born to be born to be wild. You know that song? Well, that's a famous song from the film, uh, Easy Rider. If you saw Easy Rider, right? Where a man in his motorcycle, right? Little Red Corvette by Prince, another, you know, song about a man in his car. And Graceland, if you know the song Graceland by Paul Simon, do you know where Grace, what is Graceland? Whose house was called Graceland? 
very important American singer. Some Americans believe he's still alive, that he never died. He's still alive. He's still with us. It starts with an E as an elephant. Think of very exaggerated clothes and very good, handsome man. No, Elvis? Do you know who Elvis? Elvis. Uh, Elvis. Elvis's home was called Graceland, and that's a very important place for many people. It's their dream to go visit Elvis's house and see it. You can go inside his private plane. You can go inside his house. It's very kitsch, 1970s, but it's still there. You can go. It's in Memphis, Tennessee. I've never been there, but I want to go. True or false? An important road trip destination in the South is Elvis's home, Graceland. Hmm, true or false? Thank you, thanks. I'm there for you, I'm there for you. It's true, you have to go to, you have to go to Elvis's house. Oh, there you go. Quiz. Where is Mount Rushmore? Do you know what Mount Rushmore is? Oh, there's no photo. Oh, shoot. Mount Rushmore is that rock with the four, with the presidents on it. Wisconsin is red. Alabama's yellow. South Dakota is blue. And Wyoming is green. It's in South Dakota. Let me see if I can find the, well, do you know what picture I'm talking about? We'll look at it in a second. It's that big rock. And then you can see the president. Washington they're the four you know the four sculptures of the presidents you know it if you see it I don't think I, I thought I put a picture sorry about that if you saw it you would know true or false death valley is the fifth largest park in America true or false haha -ha. it's actually true it's the fifth not the first the first four national parks, the first largest parks are in Alaska. Alaska is very big. There's a lot of space. And so the four, the one, two, three, and four are national parks in Alaska. The fifth one is Death Valley. And the sixth one is also in Alaska. So most of the top 10 are actually in Alaska. Um, but number five is Death Valley, which is also pretty big, by the way. There's a lot of space in America. Okay, what road trip would you like to take in America? You can take the coast to coast, which is New York to California, the north to south, which is North Dakota to Texas or Washington to Mexico, the Atlantic coast, which is Vermont to Florida or Route 66, Chicago to LA. What would you like to take? Both of you said coast to coast. Very interesting. Take a look. I don't know how well you can see this. I just want to show you these. So these are the different routes you can take. Okay. So we normally think about the coast to coast one, right? Or route 66 that starts in Chicago. This is Wisconsin right here. This is Illinois. So Chicago's, can you see my screen? Okay. Can you see? So this is route 66 goes through these States and finishes in Southern California and Los Angeles. Then you could take the Atlantic coast, which starts here in Vermont, goes down, down to Florida. Then there, I love this one, the North Dakota to Texas and Mexico is called the road to nowhere. <laughs> um, then you've got the border to border, which is, you, this is the coast to coast, right? Cause you've got the Atlantic coast and you finish on the Pacific coast, but the border to border means the border with Canada. You can go down to the border with Mexico. Um, then there's the Great Northern, which follows the border between America and Canada. That's another interesting one. Um, there's also the Great River Road, which follows the Mississippi River, for example, some what Mark Twain was talking about. I like this one too. The loneliest road goes from California all the way to New York. Then you've got the Appalachian Trail. That's that's a very interesting one that many people do walking. It goes through the mountains. It has all kinds of crazy things happening. It's very treacherous, very difficult, but it's a favorite for people who like hiking um, to do that on foot. I don't think I would be able to do it. Then there's, of course, the Oregon Trail, 
that is the trail that uh, that the, the people who are kind of discovering new places in America that they took. You've probably heard about some of these names. Well, I can't remember them right now. I can't remember. But anyway, so these are the different uh, most famous trips that you can take. I think they all look interesting. This is you could do this all your life, right? Still never finish. OK, let's go. And that I think was our last one. What's our podium look like? Well, we only had two people, so the you had to kind of um, who's in second place? Lodi cheats here. Congratulations, you're second. <laughs> Bruna, congratulations, you won! Yay! Okay, you're both very good. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. All right, good. So let's talk about it. What do you think? Did you learn something today? Have you been to America before? Did you do the the coast to coast? Yes, uh, I was uh, in uh, 1998. In 1998? Where did you go? Friends, uh, American, uh, Italian friends, uh, where I, I um, Sunday uh, drive in Liguria. They live uh, in Liguria, but uh, in those years yeah, I was uh, with the every day in America, coast to coast, with uh, wow. four people, uh, two parents and two uh, daughter and a son. And uh, I remember, but probably the, the biggest generation wasn't. Uh, uh, a topic uh, about me, my my youth. Yes, that's fine. I always bring up these things because in Italy people don't know about them. So I try to introduce a new thing for you. So yeah, you're right. When people go to do the coast to coast, they're not thinking about American literature from the 1950s. But I feel like I can share it with you. Did you have a good experience? Yes, yes, of course, of course. And what? Uh, the food uh, also was uh, was good for me. The you had a good experience with food. For Italian people is a, a problem abroad, <laughs> but for for us, I remember was a, a good food. And uh, generally, the experience uh, for me is there was uh, the best, uh, the longest uh, travel. Yes, in my experience. Uh, during the oh, war. How long? Uh, 26 uh, days from uh, Bolzano to, to Genova, to Ge from Genova to Paris and uh, New York. Very yeah. nice. Very nice, very nice. Good. Did you ever go to America? I have never been to America. Um, but uh, it's my dream, and I hope uh, sooner or later to go there. But uh, a few years ago, a friend of mine, Alessandra, uh, yes, drove the 66, the route 66, and uh, every day she sent me. Uh, the the travel the, the 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 part of travel she uh, have been uh, doing oh like on the map she showed you her route how yeah. interesting so you yeah. followed her trip and uh, she sent uh, also uh, many photos uh, among this, those um, a very strange with uh, the the the, the a part of car the the, the oh, part of, oh sure Cadillac Ranch probably right our our uh, our big in the in the in the yeah in the earth and yeah there, there's there's these Cadillacs that are in a row right they're lined up it's called Cadillac I Ranch Cadillac I think it is still uh, a photo in uh, in her profile where she is uh, between two, two cars and uh, from Deep Valley and uh, very, very 
strange and beautiful. Very strange. In fact, that is a very famous roadside attraction. Remember, we talked about that before, these strange things, but something interesting to visit when you're on your long trip from one place to another. That is fantastic. Where would you... question, excuse me. Madrid Valley is a park. It's called a park. Death Valley is a park? Yeah. But I remember it was a... A region, uh, not a park. A park, uh, I remember, was uh, uh, two, two biggest park. Um, I don't remember. Like Yellowstone. Yellowstone. When we think of national parks, yeah. we think of yeah. Monument yeah. Valley. We think of yeah. Yellowstone. Well, Death Valley is called a park because it's protected. It's protected by the government. So it's part of the national park system. So even if it's yeah, not a traditional the park, car, yeah. the fire, they have, have had a, a problem with the car, I remember. Oh, the, plus it's so the, hot there. Yes. But if you go on, I don't know if you use social media, but either Instagram or Facebook, I love the page of the National Park System, the American National Park System system they have the most beautiful photos every day of animals and of nature so we often talk about the bad things of social media but i can tell you my favorite thing about social media is the national parks page because sometimes they have animals that have a funny face or they just show you things that you never you normally don't get to see unless you work there so you may, if you're interested in nature and in national parks, I suggest you do a search and go to, they also have a website. You can visit their website. You can, uh, I love, I follow them on Instagram, which I'm not a big, I'm not a big Instagrammer. I'm on there because my daughter is on there. So I kind of like to see what, but I have completely different interests than my daughter. So I'm interested in the national parks, but they have very interesting post that maybe you're interested in. Um, so it's a very, uh, they, they give you information, what's happening at that moment. It's really nice. You can, and even in the winter or before the winter, you can watch the bears in Alaska as they eat all the salmon before they hibernate. So there's a lot of fun things on there. If you like, if you like uh, the idea of American parks, you learn a lot of interesting Thanks. things. Thanks. Good. Any other questions? Uh, it's hot, right? You're ready for you're ready for a vacation, maybe. What are you going to do for your vacation this summer? I have just uh, come back uh, from uh, Soda of Italy, and uh, therefore I wasn't in prison, and, and I couldn't uh, collect uh, because I haven't uh, my PC and with the phone it was uh, very complicated and there the 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 net was uh, wasn't uh, very good uh, and I have uh, come back uh, on a Saturday last Saturday and um, I think I will stay in Bolzano in July and in August, yes. Okay, so, but you had a good trip. Yes. We very had, nice. Yes, by bus and uh, very, very easy and very comfortable um, uh, location and uh, the life uh, was very, very easy and yes, comfortable without problem, good food uh, and uh, uh, yes, comfortable um, resort. Uh, the sea, the water was very, very clean and uh, um, cliff. And so, yes, I was uh, um, um, a few years ago, and uh, for this reason, I um, returned. Very nice, good. What about Lauri Gizio? What are you going to do um, this summer? Two weeks ago, I was in Pantelleria for a uh, trekking every day with a uh, back, uh, back, back, uh, 
that brackish water because it's it is a mix of salt water and fresh water brackish water it's where water. i think alligators yeah. like that water yeah brackish r-a-k-i-s-h yeah. it's a particular uh, word you can impress mm-hmm. your friends um, very uh, nice interesting uh, holiday it sounds very nice uh, mm-hmm. good <laughs> all right well, we're coming to the end. Let's do our final thought for today. I normally ask you, what's your final thought? My final thought for today is I'm very happy that we got to play one more game together before, before we take a break for the summer. Then we'll see each other in person in September. That'll be fun. I think it's on September, the end of September. So I will come to Bolzano. So we'll have another uh, meeting then, but in person. So that would be a different situation. That would be very fun. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. I hope you have a good summer. Okay, final thought? Okay, but uh, in September, uh, I'll be in uh, La Maddalena because this, this is uh, uh, my year. <laughs> and uh, in September, I'll be in La Maddalena, North uh, Sardinia. And uh, okay. probably I won't uh, see you and for me, it's a, a very bad. Uh, I lost our uh, occasion uh, to well, meet uh, Caroline. <laughs> well, we'll see each other again online, I'm sure. Yeah. And maybe there will be another occasion for me to come to Bolzano. I hope so, because I love Bolzano. So I'm yeah. always looking for a good excuse to come. So. Do you live in uh, Trieste? I do. Yeah, so I'm very interesting. Uh, yeah, I love Drias. Final thought? Um, my final uh, is that, uh, um, like uh, my last uh, or first time, uh, it was uh, very, very funny. And uh, I, I didn't uh, uh, understand all. Uh, I'm happy to to can understand uh, um, many things uh, and uh, yes I didn't know uh, and the, the answer but I tried and uh, sometimes it worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you learn something too? Yes, of course. Good. Uh, That's yes, the point. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Good. Um, yeah, the point is also is just to play for fun, but we yeah. learn while we play. So it's more fun to play than for me to say this, 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 right? So your English, both of you, your English is very good. I'm very happy. Unfortunately, I cannot uh, take a uh, note, take uh, uh, some note about the uh, so many informations. Uh, um, I hope that uh, this uh, meeting will be 
Uh, it's recorded. Yes, recorded, posted. Because yes. I I would have uh, seen, uh, watched uh, the the last uh, Renaissance, but uh, it wasn't. Uh, because when I can uh, uh, slow, I can uh, check and uh, slow, slow um, watch. Uh, I can uh, uh, reflect about. Uh, yeah, this is recorded, so you can always go back later, absolutely. Okay, good. And I'll try to put together some links for you too. But anyway, in the meantime, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to just switch over the, um, I'm going to have to make you guys the host. And then we will say goodbye. Let's see more.